Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I will turn it over to Representative Anchia. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee. You know, we're thankful that we're assembled here for what um, for what is a revisiting of Dallas's of our vision for Dallas's greatest natural asset, the Trinity Park. We're grateful to Councilwoman Grayson for inviting us to participate in this advisory process alongside a group of Dallas's uh, premier thought leaders. At our first meeting, we were all asked by Larry Beasley to serve as the conscience through which to filter this Dream Team proposal. It's our view that we narrowly avoided a calamity in 3C. It was a near miss which until today remains the city's dominant vision for the park. 3C, in our view, would have done great violence to the park while failing to provide any park access. I view where we are today as an important inflection point. And thanks to the leadership of Dallas philanthropists and Mayor Rawlings, members of the council, the dream team was brought in to reimagine the park. The Dream Team emphatically concluded that 3C is not needed, and that's huge, as many of you following presidential politics might say. For many years, many of you and us saying the same thing were publicly attacked and derided as cranks or worse. After today, we hope the Dallas City Council comes to the same conclusion as the Dream Team, and that is that the massive toll road is not needed. The Dream Team's vision of the park as client is a major intellectual pivot when compared to the toll road-centric vision articulated in 3C. That's really big. However, for those of you who expected a low speed meandering park access road, you're going to be sorely disappointed. It hit us the first time we saw the simulation. I don't know how it came across to you as you were watching it on the screen, but it feels too big and it moves too fast. We have tried to be self-critical and open-minded to determine whether or not we were being too harsh in our assessment of this vision. After all, Larry Beasley and the Dream Team, they're world-class experts. We're just citizens, and what do we know? We feel like we're smarter than the average bear on this issue because we've done a lot of homework, but we're just lawyers. So the Grayson appointees sought outside help to check how we were evaluating the Dream Team project. And we learned that most forward-thinking cities are redeveloping their waterfronts and other natural resources by removing highways as opposed to adding them. They're opting for low speed park access roads instead to maximize the economic development potential of those natural assets. So we asked ourselves, if the park is the client, how can a group of experts like the Dream Team design a highway running through it? And that's because the task of the Dream Team was to make the highway fit the park. So the park is the client, but with one big caveat. The client has to swallow a highway and look really good doing it. So when we sought this outside counsel, we lamented to the experts. We said, hey, we're just regular citizens. We're not world-class transportation experts. We don't, we're, we're not traffic engineers. But we were troubled by the scope and the size of the road after the first simulation. We were said we were being told it was a low speed parkway, but it still looked and felt like a highway. And the expert sort of laughed and said, well, trust yourselves. If it looks like a highway and it feels like a highway, then it's a highway. But we wanted to go beyond be this intuitive sort of eye and gut check. Right? We did some research on park roads. Even a non-exhaustive review showed that many states and cities limit the speeds in public parks to 30 miles an hour or, or less. The city of Chicago uses automatic, automatic speed enforcement to set park zone speeds at 30 miles an hour between 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. And regardless of the route, 
that this council goes. You should really look at leveraging technology to keep speeds down. New York City has lowered the speed within Central Park to 20 miles an hour. Texas Parks and Wildlife, they got back to me pretty quickly, and they noted that almost uniformly they post their speed at public parks at 30 miles an hour or slower. Why? Because they're focused on parks. So, Mayor, uh, so Mr. Chairman and members, it's not 3C, and thank the Lord. Thank Larry Beasley. Thank the Dream Team for moving us in the right direction. It's really, really important. Where we are today is a really important intellectual inflection and pivot point. But it's a f still a highway, period, full stop. And that's the issue that might make you as policymakers uncomfortable because it did us. If the park is the client, common thinking might suggest that you should act in the best interest of the client. And that's why I would, suggest, I would suggest to you that a park access road is in the best interest of the client and a highway is not. With that refined mandate, Mr. Chairman and members, we're confident that we can go farther and even do better. My colleague Angela Hunt will give you some ideas how. Thank you, Raphael.